Hi, right, in the next part we're going to talk about center of gravity and that is where I use a volume and a volume moment where in centroids I use an area and an area moment. So when I calculate the center of gravity I have a center point that is either reflected towards the y-axis or the x-axis depending on the question. So in this calculation I've been given the equation of y equals 2x square and the straight line y equals x plus 3. And when I draw these two graphs and the intersection point is minus 1 and 2 and 1 and a half and 4.5 and I indicate my intersection points, show the area and they say this area rotates about the x-axis. So this is going to rotate about the x-axis. So in order to know the rotation, my strip is like this. I'm rotating like this, so I can use the normal method of calculating my volume. So this is V equals pi, y square, or square the first equation minus square the second equation. So I'll write down my upper and lower limit, my volume is going to be calculated from 1.5 up to minus 1, from 1.5 up to minus 1, my one equation square minus the other equation square, and then I square them, square this one, integrate all the terms with reference to x, and then I can submit my upper and my lower value in and it will give me an answer of 65.45 units cube. So in my, this is for the volume, for my volume moment, they say the volume will be towards, the volume moment will be, be towards the y-axis, the distance. So I need to find the distance of the from this point towards the y-axis so I'm going to calculate the x value eventually so my volume y towards the it's the volume times the distance so I will have my equation for volume times the distance now you'll see that my strip is dx and I'm moving this whole strip towards this part so it will be a full x value that I multiply this with if I was working towards the, the x-axis, then I would go from there to there, but my strip will be the x, then it will just be half, then I would divide this by 2, because it would be half the, the distance there. So in this case, I write my equation square, write my equation square times another x, and this, when I multiply it, it gave me this term on this side, yeah? So all I need to do is take this part, multiply by another x there, and it will give me this part, x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4, x to the exponent of 5, and now I have to integrate these values, and there is my integration values for each of these terms. My upper and lower limit, I substitute this in on my calculator, I get an answer of 26.589 units to the power of 4. So now, if I want to find the distance towards the x from there towards the y, towards the y axis, which is my x distance, I'll take my volume moment, divide by the volume, so I'll write down my volume moment, I'll write down my volume, and when I divide, I see the distance is 0, 0.406. So you can always verify whether this is correct. If I look at this, from there is 1.5 up to there. There's the zero line. So this looks perfectly right from there to there that it would be 0, 0.406. So remember, always consider the question to see whether you must calculate the distance towards the y-axis or the distance towards the x-axis, or whether your strip is dx or your strip is dy. We will do another example to show you more types. In my second example, I have two different graphs. I have the graph of y equals 4x minus x squared and y equals x. 
So if I calculate the intersection points, it will give me 0, 0, and 3, and 3. So if I draw my upside down parabola, my straight line, it will intersect between these two points, 0, 0, 3, 3. So I draw my graph. I indicate with all the values that I require, my volume now will go from this point there to this point there. I will use my dx strip, and that means my strip is this way, and my rotation is about the x-axis. So the strip is this way, the rotation, so it makes it the disk method. So if I use the disk method as well, indicate the formula, indicate the two graphs, so this one square, the one graph square minus the other graph square. If I cross multiply and multiply it out and simplify it, it will give me 15x squared minus 8x cubed plus x to the power of 4. And now this is what I can integrate. So if I integrate, there's the integrated value of each term with my upper limit of between 3 and 0. So 3 at the top, 0 at the bottom. Substitute in the 3 minus substitute in the 0. And my calculator answer will give me 67.858 units cubed. Now, if I want to find my, this is my volume, now my volume moment, I'll have the volume times the distance. So, the distance that they require is center of gravity from the y-axis. So, from this strip towards the y, that will also give me an x value. So, it's also an x value on the x-axis. So, it's the full strip times the full distance. Once again, if it was the dx strip and they wanted towards the x-axis, then it would be half the value, then I would divide this x by 2. So I've got my volume times a distance, a full distance, the same, write out my equations, cross multiply it and minus uh, or multiply another x in, so it will basically be this term on this side multiplied by the another x in, so my x values will just up each one with another x value there. Integrate this terms all on its own. My upper limit is still 3, my lower limit is still 0. Substitute the 3 in minus substitute the 0 in, and on my calculator I'll find the answer of 114,511 units to the power of 4. So now if I, I've got my volume, I've got my volume moment, and if I want to find this distance, I must divide the volume moment, divide by the volume. So I take the volume moment and I divide it by the volume, and that will give me a distance of 1,688 units. So the distance from there is 1.688 from the center of this gravitational force there to the y-axis. And I always see, does it make sense? If I go, so it's between 0 and 3, so 1.688 fits perfectly into that equation, so my calculation, therefore, is correct. In our next example, we're still going to continue with center of gravity, but now I have two, a different graph. Sketch the graph of y equals 2, the ln of x over 2, Show the area between the graph, x equals 0, y equals 0, and y equals 3. So I draw my line graph. I show my line x equals 3. I know the other one is the x-axis, x equals 0, and y equals 0. So my area is contained in this. And now they say this show the strip that you would use. So in this case, I will only be able to use the dy strip because of the shape of the graph. So now they say show the strip that you will use to calculate the volume if the area rotates about the x-axis. So this rotates about the x-axis and my strip is this way and my rotation is this way. So it's a parallel. So I can only use the shell method to calculate the volume. So I write down the shell method, 2 pi integral sine of y x dy. Now I need to change my equation to x equal. So my equation is y equal, but I need my equation to be x equal. 
because I'm going to derive a reference to y, so I need the dy, the y part in my equation, so I change it, take the divide by 2, the lin will that side become e to the exponent, multiply the 2 in, I'll get 2e to the y over 2, substitute in my value there, but now uh, you will see that it's y times 2e to the, so you can take the 2 out or you can leave it, then this becomes a by parts. So I'll differentiate this part, integrate this part. So I'll differentiate this part with reference to y, and I'll integrate this part with reference to y, and there's my derivative, and so for, and my integral for both of these terms, put it into the by parts formula, write this one times this one, minus the integral of this one times that one, gives you this, so now I have to integrate this part only, and it will give me this, it's an exponential function, write it down as is, divide by the ln of the base, divide by a half there, the half comes to the top to make that 2, 4, or 8, so now I can substitute in my value from 0 to 3, so first the upper limit of 3, then to 0 on my calculator, and I'll get a volume of 162.903 units cubed. So now if I want to find my volume moment, I'll take the volume times the distance squared. So now they need to find the distance towards the y-axis. So from there, I must get the value from there towards the y-axis. So it's, if my strip was this way, I would have used the full. Now I'm going to just use half of this and the strip. So I need half of the distance, I'll use x over 2, so now it's going to be 2 pi, my equation times half the distance there, so this 2 and this 2 cancelled out, I'll have y x squared, so the equation square, because x times x will be x squared, so the equation square with reference to dy, so if I square it, I will take the value, can take the value out, I still see, oh, this is a by parts, do my by parts on the side, the y I will differentiate, the e to the y I will integrate, bring it back, write it into by parts form, re-integrate this part, will give me the same value, now I can submit my 3 and my 0 into my equation, and then I get my volume moment as 517.371. So then I can use my volume and my volume moment to find the distance of that point to the y. So if I take the volume moment, divide by the volume, 517.317, divide by 162.903, it gives me an answer of 3.176, I always make sure that does it fall into that, and that looks more or less the same, 3.176 units. So there is my distance from my center of gravity towards the Y. In our next example, example 4, we have a graph of Y squared equals 16X and a graph of Y equals 2X. They say the area rotates about the y-axis, so my area rotates about the y-axis, and the center of gravity is towards the x-axis. So I want to know what's the distance from there towards the x-axis. That means I'm going to calculate a y value there. So now it's important to know if my strip is this way and my rotation is this way, it is parallel towards each other. So I must use the shell method. So when I calculate the volume, I write down the shell method for two graphs there. So it's 2 pi, the integral of x with y2 minus y1. Substitute into my two equations into it. Multiply the x into it and then it simplifies into 4x3 over 2 and 2x squared. And this is with reference to dx. My strip is dx values. So I now integrate the first term, integrate the next term, substitute my upper limit, my area is between 4 and 0, that creates the volume, so it's between 4 and 0, first submit into the equation the 4 minus, put in my 0 and it on my calculator, 
it's going to give me an answer of 53.617 units cubed. Now this is the volume, now I need to find the volume moment. So I've got the equation, I've got my standard equation, but now I need to find the distance. Now I see, okay, my strip is this, but I only need half the distance, so it's the one y value plus the other y value divided by 2, so, or rather minus the other y value be by 2 there, so when you, it must be plus, when you do that, you get a difference between two squares. So, if it is the bracket square, bracket square, so it is a plus there, so y square minus 1, y square plus 1, so it's this one plus this one divided by 2, and this and this will give me a difference between two squares, and there's my x. So now I would simplify, put in the equation, square it, and it gives me just 16 square x if I square this value. If I go to the next term and I square it, it will be just the y term, and I square my y equation there, and subtract it too, so multiply this in, multiply this in, that will give me this new equation. Now I can integrate with reference to x, integrate the first term, integrate the next term, substitute into the upper and lower limit, and on my final answer I'll get 268.083 units to the power of 4. So when I have my volume and my volume moment, I can now divide the two terms Divide 268, divide by 53, and it gives me exactly 5 units. So from there to there is exactly 5 units. And it makes sense if I look according to my graph. And that's how I calculate the center of gravity towards y for that particular equation.